Hi gang, I'm my radar meteorologist Matt Capucci. If you live in Atlanta and happen to look up at the sky on Tuesday, odds are you would have seen a nebulous crisscross drifting overhead. You might also have heard and smelled things a little bit different in the early morning hours. No, there wasn't an alien invasion going on. Instead, we could inspect the atmosphere for the answer. By the way, if you're joining us on YouTube, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you do, I can guarantee you one day of sunny weather whenever you want it. Guaranteed. Let's begin with a water vapor image from the GOES East weather satellite. It appears down at Earth from 22,236 miles above. See the lattice of patchwork blue lines? That's what we're talking about. We can switch to ordinary visible satellite imagery, which shows us simply what the clouds look like to the human eye. You can see those same lines once again, albeit fainter and a little bit more diffuse. Now you may recognize these as contrails, or the clouds formed from the exhaust of airplanes. Weather conditions over the southern U.S. were very supportive of contrail development, and the airspace around Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport is among the busiest in the world. Contrails form when air reaches saturation, i.e. the temperature and the dew point are the same. That's a sign we're squeezing all the moisture out of the air. But I looked at a humidity and temperature profile of the atmosphere, and the air was actually a little bit dry at flight level. However, temperatures were around minus 72 degrees Fahrenheit. At that temperature, the air can hold very little water. We're talking only about 0.07 grams of water per kilogram of air. And up there, at that pressure, a kilogram of air would fill an SUV. The ambient air had just enough moisture in it though, that coupled with a tiny spittle of humidity exiting the airplane, it was able to overwhelm the air's minuscule ability to hold it. That led to a strip of saturation. The result? A cloud. And we call that cloud a contrail. Airplane exhaust also contains carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides, hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, sulfur gases, soot, and microscopic bits of metal. Remember, all engines are imperfect, and any dirtiness produced by combustion enters the air. That can provide small nuclei for moisture in the air to condense and or freeze onto. And at that altitude, it's definitely cold enough you'll get ice crystals. Now we all have that crazy neighbor or uncle who's convinced that contrails are actually the government spraying stuff to control our minds. That's a bunch of malarkey, but it does lead to a good point. Contrails do have a verifiable climate impact, but we're not sure exactly what that is. Does the diaphanous thin veil of cloud cover that sometimes forms from merging contrails cut back on incoming sunlight and reduce temperatures? Or does it trap outgoing long wave radiation at night and blanket temperatures to keep the Earth warmer? It's probably a bit of both, but we're not sure what the dominant effect is. Now, if you lived within a couple miles of an airport on Tuesday morning in Alabama or Georgia, you may have heard the planes extra loud and perhaps you even smelled them. That's thanks to a strong inversion or an increase in air temperature with height. Let's show you what that means. Here's a weather balloon sounding from Peachtree City, south of Atlanta, on Tuesday morning. The surface was 28.9 degrees, but just 650 feet up, it was 50 degrees. That's a huge difference. The layer of warm air just above the ground prevented surface air from rising. That means pollutants likely built up near the surface. That includes car exhaust and airplane exhaust. Here in DC, for example, I live about two miles from Reagan National Airport, and on mornings with strong inversions, I can sometimes smell the airplane fuel at my apartment. The inversion also affects sound. The speed of sound increases in warmer air since the molecules are vibrating faster and can transfer sounds more quickly. The interface of warmer air a few hundred meters above the ground acts as a ceiling, with sound waves kind of reflecting off it. That helps sound to echo back and forth and linger a little while longer while traveling farther. This effect is very common with thunderstorms in the wintertime. All that to say Tuesday's setup over the south was pretty darn interesting. Every day is an opportunity to learn some science because the atmosphere is one of nature's most patient and elegant teachers. I'm meteorologist Matthew Capucci for my radar. Follow my radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download my radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa. Xbox and Windows.